at the beginning of the season. We all got stunned by that gruesome Gordon Hayward injury to his ankle. This was right after they signed him to a four year, $128 million contract. This was his first season in Boston and it just looked horrible. They had just had a tremendous offseason. I mean, they traded away all these players and a pick to get Kyrie Irving a superstar, a superstar. They had Gordon Hayward. They already had Al Horford there. They had new rookies like with Jason Tatum and stuff. They seem like they can really make a push for the Eastern Conference Championship at least. And I'm emphasizing the East because I wasn't sure about the West and Golden State, but the East, they look like they could have really won. But then... Later in the season, Kyrie Irving, he had to get another procedure because his left, you know, his left knee was sore. The same left knee that he injured in the finals in 2015, he had to get a follow-up minor procedure thing, something like that. They said it was bothering him. It was bothering him last year. This was the same knee. He was threatening to get, you know, surgery on if Cleveland didn't trade him. So it just looked like, God damn, two All-Stars. Both of them got to leave. I mean, it, it just looked like a disaster for Boston. Marcus Smart, their best perimeter defender and one of their most important players on their team. I mean, he might not seem like it, but he is so vital to that team. I'm telling you guys, he had missed some times. And the point I'm trying to make is that they lost two all-stars, two all-stars for the season. And they're still on verge to make the Eastern Conference Finals and possibly the NBA Finals. And I think as crazy as this may sound, as crazy as this may sound, those injuries that ultimately seem like they ruined this 2017, 2018 year, those injuries ultimately saved or at least helped their future in the you know, 2019, 2020, all that stuff. And let me explain why I say this. I mean, as cute as their team seemed in the beginning of the year with Kyrie, Gordon Hayward, and Al Horford, that team wasn't really going to win an NBA Finals. If you be honest with yourself, a team led by those three, it was it was a great trio and stuff like that, but it really wasn't going to win the NBA Finals. They probably could have gotten to the Finals, but I feel like if they ran into Houston and definitely Golden State, they weren't winning the championship. But now that Kyrie and Gordon is gone, the genius of Brad Stevens, he's actually maximizing everyone else on the team and he showed their full potential of the younger players that probably wouldn't have gotten the opportunities without those crucial injuries to the superstars. I was talking to my dad the other day and he was talking about Philly and Boston and I'm gonna get to that at the end of the video because everybody's bashing Philly because they know I'm a fan and talking about Ben Simmons. Trust me, I'm gonna touch on that at the end of the video. No, I'm not gonna skip that. Just stay, If you wanna hear me, just stay to the end of the video. But I was talking to my dad and he said something extremely smart. He said, Boston, they lost two All-Stars but I think they may have gained three. And I was just like, God damn, that may be the truth. Terry Rozier was taken with his 16th pick in 2015. And to me, he always seemed like a more skilled Patrick Beverly, but this was way before I actually got the opportunity to see what he can do. He's hitting every single big shot. He has a nasty crossover. He gives them incredible energy. And as crazy as this sounds, he's probably given them at least 80 to 90% of Kyrie Irving. Jalen Brown, he was almost like the forgotten guy in the 2016 draft. He only averaged six points last year, and it wasn't even his fault. I'm not saying it in a bad way. Brad Stevens, he's just a type of coach that he likes his guys to earn their spot. And Jalen, he's definitely earned his spot now. He averaged 14 points in the regular season, and he's upped it to 17 in the playoffs, even with a bad hamstring, so he's balling. And last but certainly not least, Jason goddamn Tatum, man. Last year in July, I remember I tweeted, I said, Jason Tatum, I think he could be better than Paul George. And man, I think I was so, so right on this. This man is averaging 18 points in the playoffs. All these young players that they have, they're getting so much valuable experience. I mean, this is their first year together. They're in the playoffs, and most of them, they, they haven't even been in this spot yet. It's Rozier, he hasn't played this many big minutes. Jalen Brown, he didn't play like this last year in the playoffs. And Tatum is a rookie. He's a rookie. The only player that got this much experience is someone like Al Horford and Marcus Smart, barely. So the point I'm trying to make in this quick video is that yeah, they lost two All-Stars and stuff like that, but they can possibly come back next year with five to six potential All-Star talents because Rozier, you can bash him or whatever. Rozier is an All-Star under Brad Stevens. I don't care what you say. Tatum and Brown, they have All-Star talent, and they will be an All-Star in the future. Gordon and Kyrie and Al Horford, they, you know, they've already established themselves as All-Stars. They have resumes, etc. Kyrie's a champion, so they can possibly come back next year to me with a chance to win the finals. I'm serious about that. They can win the finals next year. I can really see them beating Golden State in the finals next year, and I'm, I'm dead serious about that. 
this year for Danny Ainge and Brad Stevens and everybody upstairs, I'm telling you, this is like a dummy year because they're only going, they're only going to get better. If they lose next round to Cleveland or something like that, who the hell is going to bash them or even care? I mean, they weren't even supposed to be here. Most people, they picked them to lose to Milwaukee. So who, who's going to bash them if they lose to Cleveland? What's the shame in that? If they lose to Golden State, that's even better. Imagine if they got to the finals and lost in five or six games. That's a successful season without Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward, and no one saw that coming. So that's a great season for them. I'm telling you, next year, when they get Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving back, that's great because they don't even have to be the saviors for the team because they already proved they can do it without them. So it's just more put into the pile, whatever. That's a bad saying, but yeah, whatever. And let me touch on Philly real quick. Let me I said I would do it, so let me touch on Philly real quick. I'm going to make this real brief. Everyone's bashing Ben Simmons and Philly because they know I'm a 76ers fan and hitting in my messages and saying, oh, he's not Magic. He's not LeBron, okay? Magic, he won a championship his first year, fine. LeBron, he wasn't even in the playoffs his first year, okay? Ben Simmons is a first-year player. If you don't want to call him a rookie, whatever, you can't deny he's a first-year player. He's helped take a team that was the process winning 10, 20, 30 games and stuff like that. He's helped get them to the playoffs and he's won a series. I mean, everyone praises Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's the savior. After LeBron leaves, oh my God, the Greek freak, whatever. Yet he can't get out the first round. He can't get out the first round. Ben Simmons, he gets out the first round. His first year playing and you guys bash him because he's struggling against Boston, who has a superior coach and, and, and a lot of talent. I mean... Come on, man. That's just not fair. So LeBron wasn't even in the playoffs his first year. Ben Simmons is in the playoffs, and you guys just bash him like, like this is his sixth year. Russell Westbrook, he can't get out the first round without himself. So, I mean, I mean, come on, man. Come on. Ben Simmons, give him some time before you start to bash him. This is his first year playing. So, yeah, man. Ben Simmons, I know you. people love to hate on the new prodigies, the new talent, whatever. But once he gets an intermediate game and he can shoot mid-range, and he will get that. He will be special. So come on, man. It's to be fair. That's the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys didn't, leave a dislike. I hope you don't do that. If you do, leave a like, comment, comment, comment. I love seeing you guys' comment. I love interacting with you guys. Do all that great stuff. Follow my social media. Subscribe. Turn on my post notifications. Do all that great stuff. And until next time, guys, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.